Hi everyone. This video I'm going to take a look at how to properly apply decks and area loads within Risa 4. This is a basic topic, but we do see a little bit of confusion on this through our tech support questions, and I believe that's simply because most users are a bit more seasoned with Risa 3D than they are with Risa Floor, and the application process is a bit different, so it can be confusing, especially when you're starting out in Risa Floor. Knowing that, we just decided to go ahead and build this video since it's a it's a quick and easy way to show you visually how the program's expecting you to apply your loads. So unlike Risa 3D, Risa Floor is always going to expect you to have a default area load and a default deck applied within every diaphragm region. The diaphragm edge is this purple edge here that in this model extends around the whole of the structure. Um, so within each of these areas where the diaphragm edge is, it, um, is defining essentially a floor edge, we're going to have a, de a default deck and area load applied within those regions. Those defaults are set right here in the floors spreadsheet. I'll go ahead and expand that here and we can see the defaults. We have the area load default, the deck default, and the deck angle default, which is just automatically set to zero, which is um, telling us that the deck is spanning in the horizontal direction in this global Z direction here. These just read in, these are just drop down menus that read in directly from the associated spreadsheets. So the area load default just reads in all of the options that you have here in your area load definition spreadsheet. You can see the labels are all the same. Similarly, the deck definition spreadsheet is what feeds into this deck default. And you can add or edit either of these spreadsheets anytime you like, uh, and then the changes will be reflected here in these drop down menus as well. So we have you set a default for all three of these entries. And then if you wanted to have regions of differing loads or differing decks, that's when you would manually draw on the deck or loading. Otherwise, if it's all the same, it's a uniform floor, you can just leave it at that, solve, and be on your way. But most likely that's not the case, so you would have areas where you're going to draw on some additional load or decking to override the default. And you can certainly doing, do that with any of these drawing tools here. So if you were to draw on another area load or another deck over the defaults, the program is going to recognize that the topmost applied deck or area load is the one that governs and is the one that's used during solution. So essentially when you draw one on in any region, it's going to override what's what the default is or if you had previously drawn on another underneath it. So I'll go ahead and just for kicks here, we'll turn on the view of the decks with the default. And we see we have several drawn on automatically in this model. But over here is just the default, oops, we'll show that, composite deck spanning in the horizontal direction. If I wanted to draw on another deck, I could just pick a random deck. This is nonsensical, but we'll go ahead and show it over this region. And it's, as you see, the color changes. It's overriding the default underneath it. So during solution, this portion of your floor is going to see that you have a metal deck rather than the composite deck. Always go ahead and delete that back out. <laughs> Similarly with area loads, the same thing, it's going to work exactly the same way. The only difference with area loads is this additive checkbox from within the area load definition sp spreadsheet. If you have that checked, the load is not going to override what's underneath it, but rather add to it. Um, so you're just going to see the load magnitudes add together during solution. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just draw on over the areas that you want to be different and then you can go ahead and solve. Now the other thing that can cause some confusion um, or can be a little bit difficult for new users is how do I confirm this? Because if you're drawing on loads over loads, you want to make sure that the final result is what you're expecting. And I would say the easiest way to do that is using these graphical uh, viewing tools. So right now I have turned on my deck type without the default shown. 
So I can see here, according to my key, which uh, excuse me, which decks are applied in which regions. Because I'm choosing to view it without the default, I know that this blank area here is where the default resides. And I can always confirm that by coming back up here and selecting to show the deck with the default. And again, we'll see that show up here. Now you'll also see it show up underneath these other portions, just because we want to show you that that is the default and it goes under the whole thing. But the hatching is in a different direction in these other regions, and so we can confirm that they're being overridden by these other decks. This, because this can get a little complicated for viewing, I also always look at the status bar down here. Whenever I hover my mouse over any of these regions, it will report back to me what type of deck and at what angle it's applied at. So you can always confirm what is the governing deck in these areas. Lastly, you can always go to the As Applied view as well, and that'll give you a nice solid picture here so that you don't see the default deck underneath and it, gets, it doesn't get as complicated as when we had just the hatching. But again, you can always hover your mouse over and check out the results, confirm the results in that status bar below. This is obviously a good choice for verifying your decks, but I think it's almost more so to verify your loading. So show that, I'll go ahead and turn off my deck view here, go right next door, and we'll first start by taking a look at the area loads. These are the applied area loads for the dead load pre-composite, since that's what we have selected here, that have been applied. This is everything that I manually drew on over the default, and we can always refer back using the color key here to know what they are. If I went and turned it on with the default, we'd see that default office area load underneath it displayed in blue. And then again, if we went down to the as applied, and nothing's been included in the pre-composite case, so I'll flip that real quick. And we can now see a nice color block view of everything that's applied with the post-composite dead load. Again, you can hover your mouse over any of these regions to see what area load is being applied there. And I'd like to point out that this strip here, this gray strip, if we go back to the without default view, we can see it's just a single gray strip. Oops. And that's referring to our add piping. If you recall, add piping was checked as additive in our spreadsheet. So when I go back to the as applied view, I can see that the magnitude referred in the key changes as it crosses the different um, area loads that are underneath it. So obviously this gray portion here is the add piping load plus the office load underneath it. This pink portion is the add piping load plus the storage underneath it, oh, etc. So this is a good way to confirm your load magnitudes and the areas that they've been applied in um, before you go ahead and solve. Hopefully those tools will help you um, move forward as you're working with your loading and your decks and help you will, um, be able to get in there and confirm any of that. Of course, if you're having trouble with it, certainly let us know. We're happy to help out in tech support at any time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.